is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, presented on the GSMC Podcast Network for all of your podcasting needs. Now, first first and foremost, I just want to say Happy New Year, and if you made it through the year, then you're here, and congratulations. And if you didn't make it through the year, I congratulate the ghost you on spending your ghost time to be here with me, because I know as a ghost, you have a very, very busy schedule. Now, first of all, we got some interesting things that happened in the last couple of days. First, I just want to go ahead and congratulate the Browns because the Browns are 0-16. They're the second team in NFL history to lose all their games, all of their games. Now, the last team to do this was the Detroit Lions, but the Browns are such losers. They're going to actually have a parade to celebrate their accomplishment. You want to wonder why LeBron was like, I don't want to play here no more. It's because y'all lose 16 straight games and then be like, you know what? You know what? I think we're just going to throw a parade because we love losing. How did y'all lose all 16 of the games? You telling me out of all 16 games, it wasn't one game where a team was just hung over from like Saturday and was like, you know what? We don't even really feel like even going hard against the Browns, honestly. Like we're just going to let the Browns win. And the Browns still found a way to lose. So I, con- I congratulate the Browns on being the biggest loser of 2017. I don't care about all these L's that y'all said everybody took. If somebody got stomped out, beat up, went to jail, woke up in someone's bed they shouldn't have been in. F all that. The Browns are the biggest loser of 2017. Bless up, Browns. We congratulate y'all. Now, 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 now. Here we go. So for 2018, they like they changed some laws. As y'all know, weed is like super legal now, like super legal. So like you can go to Toys R Us and you can go buy weed now. Like you can walk into Toys R Us and they'll be like, yo, are you here for Gabba Gabba or Pokemon? And they'll be like, I'm here for weed. And then Jeffrey the giraffe will come out and just give you some weed. So weed is super legal now. That's one law that changed that everybody knows about. I get into that a little bit later. But another law that had just recently changed, another law that just changed was they just basically said that you can't rent pets anymore. Now, I didn't know that people was renting pets. I had no idea this was a thing. I didn't know you could just willy nilly rent a pet, but they were scamming people and doing these like pet finance things where you would go to the store and you would get your pet and you'd be like, all right, man, $5,000 down. You say, all right, cool. And you really want this Yorkie because you want to stunt. Like you got this bag, you put this little dog in it because you want to stunt. If you put five bands down, they make you a crazy APR for it. And then you give the dog to your girlfriend, and next thing you know, you're not making your Yorkie payments. You know what happens after that? The dog man comes and takes your dog away. So that people come to people's houses, kicking the doors down and taking people's dogs. I didn't even know you could be rent. I didn't know you could rent pets. I just wanted to know, like, if you can't afford to rent a pet, that's something you should know ahead of time. If you if you put five bands down on your Yorkie, I think you got five bands. Now, if you were like out like renting chihuahuas and like renting rats, like, hey, man, how much is it to rent about like 500 mice? Uh, I don't know, man. Um, Six or seven dollars. So you give the guy six or seven dollars. That's how much you gave him. Six or seven. Because that's how much that's how much stuff costs in the block. A number or in another number, 10 or eleven dollars. That's how much it costs. So you rent all these rats, right? And they come to your house, kick down your door, and they're taking people's pets. And I found this interesting because, like, they'll let you rent anything. Like, you can go to rent a center and you can get a television for, like, you could put you could put $10 down. And you can rent this TV for $3 a month for 500 years. And that's okay. You can go to the, to the car dealership that's under the freeway over there. And you can go give the guy, like, two bands for a 1999 Honda Civic. And he'll be like... Good payment, man. I'll give you a really good payment. Good payment. $25 for 500 years. APR, 600%. And that's all okay. 
But once we start taking people's pets, y'all getting mad? Like, how are we that attached to animals? Like, nah, hey man, financing pets is wrong. But they'll let you finance anything. Like they'll repossess your car. Peeking to repossess. Hold up. We good, we good. They'll repossess your car right now, and you ain't got no way to get to work, and that's cool. But God forbid we giving people pets that they can't afford. I personally just feel like that's a really bad experience for a child, because that's probably why they stopped doing it. Because you're like, yo, man, I really, I just want a cat. Wait, how much? How how much are these animals? Because you can go to the uh, you can go to the SBCA and get you four or five cats for like seven dollars. You just pay the adoption fee, and you can go there and get you a cool Labrador retriever. He might not be a Labrador retriever. He might be a lab pit. So he'd be a Labrador with pit bull tendencies. Like he just look like a lab, but he bite a lot. So whatever. Pets aren't that expensive. You got to be leasing them though. Like who, who, what is you, are you, what are you leasing? Like, I don't really feel like you should have to lease a dog or a cat. Are, are you, are you leasing giraffes? Like what, what are you doing? I, I want to know how much these pets are that you got to get a rental fee for them. Cause me personally, if I got to rent a pet, I'm going to rent a whole tiger because you're not finna come and take my tiger back. And I'm going to just have him just walking around like I'm Mike Tyson. Or I'm the dude from Walking Dead. I got a whole tiger named Sheba. You're not going to come get him unless it's like hangover where they just put the tiger in the taxi and then they just take him to the hotel. How do you put a tiger in a taxi? Anyway, so I mean, as of right now, that's what they're doing. If you rent a pet, well, they're not letting you rent pets no more. So for some of y'all that didn't know you could do it. And y'all got really excited. It's good that you can't. Because if you heard about this story and you was getting all excited, Googling stuff to rent a pet, you can't afford it. You can't. Mm -mm, you can't. Nope. Nope. You wasn't supposed to be renting the pet. No way. So I'm good they're not doing it no more because you, you was going to be some trouble. Anyway, another law that, as y'all know, weed is like super legal, like super ultra legal. Like you can go to Babies R Us and they'll give you some weed right now. So apparently you can just go in there and get it all willy nilly. I need y'all to know the difference because I didn't know this because me, I don't necessarily partake in the marijuana recreationals because when I do that, um, I tend to sleep for four or five days and I miss like months and months of my life. So I don't really partake in that per se. So I was always in the impression that California had all the legal weed all the time. I thought you go to Jack in the Box, you say, hey, man, let me get a number eight. And then they give you an eighth. That's what I thought. That's how I thought it worked out. Turns out it wasn't legal yet. It was just like you needed one of those cards. Like you needed a card that said, hey, my knee hurts sometimes on Tuesday. And they said, all right, cool. Here's a week. But I know some people, they didn't want to be on some alleged list. That's what my cousin used to say. He said, hey, man, I don't want to be on the list. I don't want them knowing all my business. Bro, like you post all your business on Snapchat with guns. Like how, how they know your business. So apparently with the law that just passed, they made it like mega legal so that you can buy it anywhere without a card or, or like anything. You just need an ID. So like you can buy like beer, same way you can buy like weed. So what I've been seeing is a lot of people like infusing everything into the weed since it's all legal now. I saw something on Instagram where they got baked goods, just weed all inside of them. And I saw some cakes that got weed all inside of them. I saw some water that had weed in it. I'm just genuinely concerned about when they start putting like weed inside of the alcohol. Like I don't really think that we need more of an alcoholic boost in our alcohol like they we've all, we already have the 151s and the everclears and they got all this alcohol that tastes like candy like smirnoff has an alcohol that comes in like a gatorade bottle and it's blue i don't know who that's being marketed towards but i'm gonna say it's not adults i'm gonna say that it might be somebody that's hanging out at toys r us so now you're at toys r us and you got your blueberry you got your blueberry favorite weed you got your blueberry favorite smirnoff and I'm going to say that you're going to drop out in 10th grade, but it's okay. It's okay. Cause California is basically like the home of the free. You're good. Like all you need is a 10th grade education. Anyway, they hire anybody at the car wash. You'd be all right. When I get back, I'm going to tell you about the mega beef between Kim Jong-il and Donald Trump, because it's getting real. Be right back.
Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC weird news podcast with your favorite host ryan holloway so i lied i told you guys that i was gonna go ahead and i told you guys i was gonna go ahead and tell you about the the kim jong il and like donald trump button thing which is interesting like that's cool but no 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 i got something else for you guys i got something else i got something else so i'll talk about that in a minute so you know how um you know holidays come around and we start missing people and you start wondering about family members and where they've been at. And, you know, just, you know, times just get, times get a little hard. Times get a little hard sometimes. And, and you want to, and you wonder where these people are at and if they're, if they're around. And so what do you do? I mean, you write them a letter, you miss them, you pray for them, you do that type of stuff. Right. Um, but some people take it a little bit further, some People take it a little bit further than where it has to go. And with that, Basically, I have a story about a man who decided he was going to dig up his cousin because he wanted to spend New Year's with him. So, no, this was no, this not happened in America. This happened in Colombia, just in case y'all got concerned. Uh, The man wanted to spend the New Year's with his family member. So he dug him up and he got hurt while digging him up. So he dug him up and apparently got like a cut on his arm. People didn't believe that he actually dug this guy up. So they wouldn't ask me what the cemetery, like, Hey man, um, like did, did he, did he dig up? Oh boy. And they're like, nah, that's impossible. Like, there's no way that happened. So some people, they go into the, they go to like the chamber where they keep people, the crypt or whatever. And dude is just missing. He's just not there. Like he's just not there anymore. So it turns out, it turns out your man's dug up this guy because he wanted to spend New Year's with him. Now, my question was this, like, I was like, OK, so maybe this is one of those things where when people die and they carry them around in the streets. I know in other countries that happens like somebody died and they carry them in the streets, you know, bless up. I'm not one to diss anyone's culture. However you handle your dead, that's how you handle them. Do you as long as you don't, you know, uh, have sex with them. So. I was thinking that the guy passed away maybe on Christmas, maybe Thanksgiving, maybe Halloween, maybe the summer, Easter, maybe last Super Bowl, maybe last Super Bowl, this guy died. No, no. This guy's been dead for two years. He has not been alive for two whole years. So like when you, when you went to just take this man out of the casket, when you went to take him out and you saw like the condition that he was in, like as a staff record label in the crew. And you have to rethink this, like, Hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe like me, maybe me, maybe like the removal of this individual won't be the removal of one individual. And I also want to know like how heavy, how, how strong are you? Because if you have this plan, like, okay, this one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open this coffin up. I'm gonna grab my man's I'm going to take him with me to new, I'm going to take him with me. And then we're going to spend new years together. Where, where do you have to go? Like, couldn't you just open the casket and like, Hey, what's up cousin. And then you guys gave a dap or whatnot, did what you needed to do. And then he just, and that was it. Like, I don't know why you had to remove him and take him somewhere. Cause he can't really see. Right. Like, like he can't see cause he's dead. So This isn't a situation where like you wanted to take somebody in their last dying wish was to go somewhere and then like, oh, look, look, we can see this together as you pass away into the sunset. Like, nah, like he's already dead, B. So with that, you don't really get like 
he can't see anything. But I respect the dedication, though, right? Because a lot of times people are in situations in life where they're just complaining like, oh, my God, I wish I could fix this. I miss Rob. I really miss him. We used to ride. We would, we would ride bikes together. We would go buy. We would go buy free. We would go buy super legal weed at Toys R Us. We would do a whole bunch of. We we would wear Browns jerseys together. That's my homie. I miss him a lot. And some people just sit there and cry and be upset. But you know what this guy did? You know what this Colombian guy did? Because he's dedicated. He decided he was going to dig the body up. So he decided to just dig the body up, and he called it a day. And I respect that because not everybody. Not everybody out here is just digging up dead bodies. That's not something that's going on. People miss people and then they decide that they'll write them a letter or they decide they talk to them or whatever or pray about it, but they don't just dig them up. So I say big ups to this Colombian guy for just digging somebody up because not everybody's out here digging people up. Something that is getting dug up is this drama that's between Trump and Kim Jong il. So, you know, this has been going on for a while, right? So, Kim Jong will tweet some stuff and then Donald Trump will tweet some stuff. And then Kim Jong will tweet some stuff and Donald Trump will tweet some stuff. And they go back and forth and back and forth. Now, just recently, um, basically, uh, Kim Jong un, he's recently said, like, hey, I got this button. I got this button and I stay ready. I have a button and it's always ready to be pushed to send these missiles towards the US. Like it's it's always ready to be pushed. And Donald Trump said, you know what? I have a bigger button and mine is always ready to be pushed. And this is really like people would say that this is really like childish, but this is like this is really um this is really gangster. Like I'm I'm just really gangster. Like this is this is stuff that happens in the streets. Like when people just tell you they're ready, like, hey man, hey, I got heat. I got heat for players like you. I got heat and I keep it in the trunk and I always got it. It's always ready. It's always ready. And then usually that warning is heated. Or it's head, it's heated. I don't know. We'll go with one or the other. Whichever one makes you guys feel better. That warning is heated, and then people go on about their day. People usually, if but if someone says, "Hey, I got a bigger gun, and it's more readier than your gun," that means you may have some problems. So, I'm not one to like be that concerned and be like all be like a war monger and be all like really scared about what's gonna happen. But when when someone says something like that, I think I. I I think that like we should be a little concerned just because usually I feel like in those situations, you kind of just let someone you kind of let somebody like just talk. Just you let somebody that's feels like they're in charge. Just, you know, just kind of talk it out. They just talk, talk, talk. You let them just spit all that stuff and then you walk away. It's like mind control. You got two guys that don't mind like talking that type of stuff to each other. Donald Trump actually tweeted me, said North Korean leader Kim Jong Un just stated that the nuclear button is on his desk at all times. Will someone from his depleted and food starved regime please inform him that I too have a nuclear button, but it is a much bigger and more powerful one than his and my button works. Word? Word? That's how you feel? And my button works? I don't really know if there's some hidden innuendos there or if there's something else that we're not hearing, but I, I'm going I'm to tell you what, if the, I don't, he shouldn't, I, if I'm Kim Jong Un, I'm not gonna let him talk to me like that. I'm, mm -mm, I'm not, mm -mm, I'm not gonna let him talk to me like that. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not picking sides. I'm not trying to instigate, even though I am, because part of me is still a fifth grader. But it just, mm -mm, you know, I'm finna just tell. He said, "Will someone from his depleted and food-starved regime please inform him that I too have a nuclear button, but it is a much bigger and more pow powerful one than his." And my button works. Word? Really? Yo, I don't even. Mm -mm. I don't. I don't even have nothing to say about that, really, because that. Mm -mm, that's something else. So, I'm gonna take a quick break and let you guys think about that. I'm gonna let you guys check on your buttons, and then when I get back, I'm gonna give you guys um, the best history, because that's what we do. I'm gonna give you the best history, which is probably something that sh something strange that happened, like. A long time ago and you'll be like word and i'm also going to tell you i'm also going to tell you guys what the browns can tell you about life okay the browns going on 16 there's a message for life in that i'm gonna I'm help you out with that i'll be right back this is your ultimate stop for everything sports the golden state media concepts sports podcast should i say more from the nfl mlb the nba to mma it's all in here the golden state media concepts sports podcast listen now
Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast, presented by and on the GSMC Podcast Network with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway. As promised, um, well, just let me give you a brief recap. Just in case you guys didn't know, um, you probably did, but just to update, Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un, their, uh, their beef, um, their conflict is getting a little bit more real because the words they're like the words they're giving out to each other they're getting a little bit more i'm gonna say um i don't want to say the word aggressive but i'm just gonna say that donald trump told kim jong-un that he has a button that's much powerful and much bigger than his and he's not afraid to use it and his button works now i don't know if there's innuendos in that statement i'm not 100 percent like if that means anything else but hey I mean, I'm. Mm, mm, I don't know. I don't know if you should let somebody talk to you like that, Kim Jong Un. I'm not sure. I'm. And again, I'm not trying to start any beef because, because, like, I'm not an instigator, but I am because I'm. I'm still like a fifth grader sometimes, so I'm really in the background. Like, oh, oh, you don't let him talk to you like that. Oh, that's crazy. Don't let him talk to you like that. So part of me is kind of like that, but it, it. I feel like usually when you got one person that talks like this on each side of like um a dispute one person usually walks away and says hey um i'm not gonna deal with that and they just grow up but neither one of these guys are gonna like grow up and it, things are gonna get lit literally like not lit in the way where like not lit like party jubilee jubilant experience not like i mean like lit like like that so fingers crossed it doesn't go down if it does zombie apocalypse here we come so as promised i told you guys i was going to tell you about how like the brown season can be a metaphor for your life or a metaphor for your 2017 i'm going to give you a little bit of art on this okay you ready all right check this out so the ink let me just i'm i'm gonna we're gonna break this down in a more practical matter so that i'm not just saying a bunch of stuff that doesn't mean anything to you um basically the browns are a football team and they went 0-16, right? So when you go 0-16, that means that you lost all of the games. Like every single game possible, that's what you lost. And this is a metaphor for life because sometimes in life, you're going to lose. And I don't mean you're going to lose once. I don't mean you're going to lose twice. You're going to lose a lot of times, a whole bunch of times, like a lot, a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean, you may lose 16 straight times. Like you may lose a whole year because that's what they lost. Like, a football season is basically a whole year and you get ready for that over the course of like the whole summer. You do spring training, you jump through all these hoops and you do all this stuff or whatever. And you draft people and you go to a draft, you draft players. Everyone's super excited about what you're going to do. They're like, yeah, we're going to have a great season. Even if, even if no one believes, even if no one believes that you're going to have a great season, people are still like, yo, people are still like, yo, um, it's fine because we're going to do great. Everything's going to be awesome. And then you lose all 16 of your games. Now that's a metaphor for life because in case you had like a really, really bad year, you got to celebrate that year. That's what new year's Eve was for. That's why the Browns are having the, are having a parade for Owen 16. There's people in Cleveland that are genuinely excited about this parade. They're genuinely excited about it. Because if that's what you're on, that's just what you're on. If you do the thing where all you do is lose all the time and you're an actual loser, you got to just own that. You got to own that year. You have to own that year like the Browns. So if your 2017 felt like you went 0-16, you got to be like the Browns and just celebrate that year, have a parade for it, own it, own it. If you gained 50 pounds last year, own it. Go buy some size 52s. If you lost 50 pounds last year because you was off that H or doing shameful things from the freeway, then own that. Have a parade for it. Tell all your friends. Have a party under the freeway. And tell all your friends like, yo, hey, man, I'm embracing this hobo life that I'm doing. I'm doing shameful things now. I'm a member at the food bank. That's how I live my life. And just own it like the Browns. You can't be all willy-nilly pretending you're a winner if you lost it's okay. Embrace that and then you can grow. Just like the guy I just told you guys about uh, from Columbia. He really missed his cousin, 
So he decided to just dig him up and party with him for New Year's. And I was under the impression this guy died a couple days ago. Maybe, silly me, I thought the guy died on Christmas. Maybe he died on Thanksgiving. Maybe Halloween. Maybe he died on Flag Day. I don't know. Turns out the guy was dead for two years. But what his cousin do? His cousin missed him. His cousin wanted to celebrate New Year's with him for love. He wanted to, he wanted to dig him up. And he hurt himself while digging him up. And I'm not saying I would dig up anybody because I missed them. I may write you a letter. I may say something passive aggressively on social media. I may tell somebody else that I don't like you, but I'm not going to dig anyone up. But I'm not here to judge anybody. This isn't about judgment. I'm just here to give understanding. And you got to celebrate. You got to celebrate who you are this year. If you go on 16, go a parade. If you like to dig up dead people, dig up dead people. I'm not one to judge anyone's culture. You can do whatever you want with your dead people. You want to walk them down the street. You want to dress them up. Use them like puppets. Do whatever you want to do. Don't have sex with them because that's gross. But do whatever you like to do. I'm going to give you guys the best news. Sorry, the best history. And I'm going to wrap this up. So this year is about being grateful. And I'm going to give you guys a heads up. I don't know how old you are. But if you use dentures or have any type of prosthetics, prosthetics, then just be happy that it's 2018. Because before there were actual prosthetics, do you know where they got fake teeth from? Hmm? You know where? They got them from soldiers. So there'd be soldiers getting all hammed up in one two civil wars things like that they take their jaw out and they would use their gums as your prosthetic as your prosthetic gums so the next time you're running around complaining about technology complain about your phone i was just complaining about my phone because my live video wasn't working it was giving me an issue but just be grateful that we live in a time where we actually have phones and have dentures if you misplace your teeth and then you don't got to put someone else's teeth all inside your mouth because only thing worse than having bad breath is using someone else's bad breath to have a conversation. Cause then you're gonna be like, hey man, your mouth stinks. Like, oh, these are my new dentures. They belong to Bob Jones. He died five days ago. They're like, hey man, you need to get you some new dentures. It's not my fault. These aren't my teeth. Someone else gave me these teeth and this is just where I'm at right now in my life. So the moral of the story is be grateful. This is where we're at right now. I'm gonna thank you guys for joining me for another episode of the GS. MC Weird News Podcast presented on the GSMC Podcast Network with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway. I will be back at the same bat time, same bat channel on Friday, but this is a podcast, so you can listen to it whenever you'd like, except for before I record it, unless you have that Back to the Future mobile, because if you do got one of those, I need you to holler at me because I got to go back and fix some stuff from 2017. So with that, as always, you guys stay safe, live long and prosper. And watch out for bottles. Check out the show built around the women of MMA from the UFC, Invicta FC, Bellator, and one championship. We got the fights covered. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight, Fight game, you know where to listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast.